Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. This is one of my favorite times of the week. We're talking about parenthood. And it's really easy for parents to think of play as just a way for kids to burn off energy, but studies consistently show the positive impact of play on cognitive, emotional, and even social skills. So joining us right now, we gotta get our expert. We have our parenting expert, Catherine Celery. Hello, Catherine. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you on the other side of Earth right now, but yet your your That's advice right. and, and the things you tell us is right where it needs to be. How, how is Hong Kong, by the way? Oh, we're just having a blast. Just having a wonderful time. All right, why don't you bring me back some kind of souvenir? But in the meantime, we need to talk about uh, getting kids out and getting them to play. And we're talking specifically about structured play because really it's essential for kids of all ages, uh, regardless of whatever limitation they might have. Let's talk about sports. How important is sports of any sort really for a child's development? Sure. So, you know, maybe you used to play with your kids all the time when they were little and you can't keep up anymore. No, and right. that's okay, right? That's okay. Sports are a great way for kids to exercise, have fun, make friends, develop key life skills. And it's good for them, not just physically, but mentally too. So you get to show up now and just cheer them on whether they win or lose. Because few of our kids are gonna be professional athletes. Yet right. learning a sport opens up doors to connection throughout their life, whether it's basketball or swimming, golf, hockey, tennis, soccer, volleyball, horseback riding, whatever they choose, it provides a social currency. So becoming competent at any sport is gonna bring that sense of mastery and joy, and it's an avenue for socializing. Okay. But it's not without its challenges either. So kids can get discouraged seeing others excel faster than them, and peers can be unkind like any of the other arenas that kids are in. So there is some temporary discomfort. It's not pleasant or fun. And if they happen to experience some of the tough stuff, it also provides an opportunity to practice assertiveness, which then builds self-confidence that they stood up for themselves. And it's an opportunity for kids to master the art of what other people say about me, what other people think about me is none of my business. And what do you say to a kid? How do you know the difference when they, you know, they go, oh, I just don't like it, I don't wanna do it. And they're really not interested or is it because they are not doing well, or they, they're not feeling that success. Do, do you force yeah. them to kind of like, hey, work through this or you're gonna regret it if you drop? I mean, what do you say to them? Especially to like, like a nine year old. Yes, well, usually, I always read for what's behind the wanting to quit. Okay. Because wanting to quit is almost always a solution to getting out of something that's uncomfortable. That and so listen for the underlying, recognize the I want to quit as a symptom, not the real issue. All right, so uh, rugby is a very uh, contact sport. In my family growing up, family game night was contact sport. Uh, how important, <laughs> not necessarily, but uh, how about family game night? Is something like that important as well? I mean, do they kind of learn oh, the same values? So great. Yeah, so family game night is an exceptional time for bonding and building memories. And maybe like you, you know, you recall from your own upbringing, or maybe there are people out in the audience who didn't have that and they're the ones starting the tradition. It doesn't matter whatever the case is. So whether you're learning something new or you play the same games over and over and over again. In our family, we do Uno Spin, Ruma Cub, card games, heart, spades, gin, rummy, favorites. We play them over and over again. And it. game night is a perfect way for us to build the family time, build the bonds, have relaxed and fun, you know, experiences together. But again, with little kids and sometimes older kids, it may be hard to enjoy a game when they aren't winning. Okay. All right, so that... set up a night beforehand okay. by talking about the big feelings that may start arising when they start losing. And you can also say, and what are the feelings that arise when you're winning? So they can begin to go, yeah, I have different feelings arising under different circumstances and then talk about it in advance. How's everybody want to proceed if those big feelings start arising okay. and it's not fun anymore? And it turns into a contact sport like my, my family. Um, okay, I'm glad you brought this up because do you let your kid win? You know, I mean, it seems like there's an age where it's like, ah, dad, let me win. And th they don't feel as accomplished. I mean, I always wanted yeah. to know about that. What's your thoughts? Well, I think it does really depend on the age of the child. Okay. And so when you have younger children, you know, it can be such 
I mean, come on. The playing field is not even. It's a little <laughs> right. like a handicap in golf. <laughs> right. You know, if the playing field is not even, then, you know, you get the handicap. So it's a little bit like that. Okay. Go and ahead. I think it's hard for children to constantly be losing when the field isn't even. Okay. And so, yeah, I think it's okay to fudge a little bit with our children and give them the chance to feel like they're learning without always having to be with somebody who might be a master. I think you're right. That's basically how I describe working with Andrea. I mean, the whole time, I mean, it's like, will I ever win? <laughs> Uh, you also say it's pretty important not to intervene and actually let the child take the lead. Explain that. Yeah. So in the world of unstructured play, because we've been talking about the structured stuff, but in the world of unstructured play, self-directed play is essential for little kids to develop healthy inside. We want them to become more and more adventurous. So language skills, thinking skills, problem solving ability, improving their motor skills, all of this they can learn in an unstructured play environment. Mm -hmm. And it builds self-confidence. So too much adult interference, you know, in playtime for little kids can stifle emerging self-regulation skills. So when they're allowed to take the lead in play, it builds self-regulation skills. It creates more independence. That helps them feel more confident. It's just all really good stuff. So follow their lead. I love Let them choose a game if they want to play it. Don't intervene if you can possibly, unless it's absolutely necessary. Just let them be. Let them Their be a kid. Their approach to activity may be different. You know, let them do what they want to do. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. Catherine, that's our time here. But of course, we want people at home to be able to check out freeparentingbook.com. Catherine Sellery, thanks for joining us.